Hmm, flex fuel. Wonder if that means it can burn diesel too. Well, it's been a year and a half since I last did an update on this van. It was February of 2022 when I did my other update. And now it's near the end of July of 2023. The world's most fuel efficient caravan looks completely stock. And it's still running great. And since then, I've upgraded. No, now it's got 165 powers of horse and 295 pounds of torquage. Well, that's great because the original motor had 250 pounds of torque. And this one gets its torque at a very low RPM. So driving this six speed manual beast feels a lot faster than driving the original caravan. And when you're driving on a gravel road and you step on the gas a little in first, second, third gear, it just lights the tires up. It runs so quiet that nobody knows it's a diesel. When you're inside driving it, you can't even hear the motor, which you'll see in a moment. So, it gets up to 55 miles per gallon Canadian, that's an imperial gallon, and which is about 47 miles per gallon for a US gallon, which is amazing for a two-ton beast like this. It used to weigh 4,300 pounds when it was with the V6 and the automatic, and now it weighs 4,000 pounds. This one turns on all the electrics for the caravan, and that one turns on the engine. So let me roll the windows up. Oops, forgot to turn the key on. Oops. Fan. And the back windows. And you can barely hear it running, but as you can see it is. I've even got an extra option that no one else has got. When I'm driving along and I need some head while I'm driving, well, I've got that covered too. Got some right there. Cool. Recognize a diesel head from an ALH, anyone? Oh. So there's how quiet it is standing beside a diesel caravan. Sounds pretty normal. That one's really loud, that has the ALH in it. Because that's diesel also. See? Well, I'll open the hood in case any viewer watching this hasn't seen the conversion yet. And there she be. Now to shut it down and tell you about a couple little issues I had. Well, first issue was February of 2022. I'm driving to the grocery store and it dies. Oh boy, it was cold out, really cold. Well, I checked to see if the fuel pump that's in the tank was running and it wasn't. Turned out that I did an error because of laziness. I used the original fuel pump that comes in the tank of this van, and it puts out 58 pounds fuel pressure for the original 3.6 Panastar V6. I didn't know how much fuel pressure it put out. I just hooked it all up to the engine, and it ran and drove fine. But on a really cold day, diesel gets more viscous and thick than uh, gasoline does. So it overloaded the fuel pump fuse and blew the, blew the fuel pump fuse and that's why it died. I knew where my fuel pump wire was coming from the tip of module was near the battery. I unhooked that fuel pump wire and connected it directly to the battery and I made it home. Right kitty? That's Angel. Well the next issue was my electric pump for my power steering from a Volvo. 
Well, that had regular hydraulic oil because that's all I had available when I was building this machine at the farm and that was hydraulic oil from my tractor. Well, that got too viscous too. And on really cold days, the electric power steering pump would just moan and groan and not fire up, wouldn't spin. So I had to spend $20 for a liter of special Volvo multi-viscosity green power steering fluid from the Volvo dealer and that fixed that problem. Another problem was one of the wires, which is a Volkswagen wire that I installed, rubbed on something a little bit and got a little cut in it so it didn't work right. And, well, that's fixed now, so it works great. It's got more power than ever with that extra performance I've got on it. And suspension issues. One of the rear springs broke, so I changed both rear springs. And the front struts went bad. You can see the springs broke, the bearings popping out because of strut plates on these vans. They seize up and that breaks the springs. So that's fixed. Now you can see because the van has new springs and it's uh, 300 pounds lighter in the front end that it sits a lot higher in the front end, which is fine for me because I do a lot of off-road driving at my farm. So let's go take a test drive and so you can see what it sounds like driving it from the inside. It's so quiet. It's, this van really does feel 100% factory and 100% as quiet as it used to be with the gas engine. There's no vibration or steering wheel shaking or anything from the diesel. And my axles are perfectly balanced that I machined and welded together. So it's just like driving a new van. So here's how I fix my fuel pressure issue. This is a Chrysler fuel pump module. Not from this van, but similar. And every one of these modules has a fuel pressure regulator. There's a spring in that chamber and a diaphragm in here. So fuel goes in here. When diaphragm gets pushed against by the pressure, the excess bleeds off through those round vents. So me being cheap and ingenious, I cut the top off this spring chamber. I put a very much lighter spring in there because VW uses 7 PSI from their fuel pump, which is called a lift pump, to send it to the secondary fuel pump, which makes 50 PSI, and that sends it to the high pressure fuel pump, which makes a whopping 23,000 PSI. So now I never had to worry again, because the problem solved, I just put four little welds, put the cap back on, doesn't have to seal up or anything, so it didn't make any difference with my lighter spring in there, and it gave me less than 10 PSI pressure. Ingenious, free, and cheap, just the way I like it. Okay, here we go in my not pro camera. Put this thing on so it don't beep. The test drive, well, one of millions, just to show what it's like driving on the road, I guess. We'll roll the windows up so you can see how quiet it is. idiot thing going off on my speedo telling me there's things not right with it well one thing that gives this vehicle more fuel economy is the bigger wheels than a Volkswagen whoa did that ever take off that was just almost a quarter throttle but I don't want to scare that little old lady it's a quiet neighborhood so I have P215 7016 tires and that makes the RPMs run at 1600 at 100 kilometers an hour, which is 62 miles per hour. So that's one reason why the fuel economy is so good. It's pretty quiet in here. I'll give it a few. Whoa. Launch control. Oh, don't want to scare that old man. This is a bedroom neighborhood.
Hi, Freddy. I'm spying on you. How are you? Good. Do you have a camera? Yeah, I'm spying on you. I want camera again. <laughs> Well, gotta slow down. Well, I was pretty easy on it in a quiet neighborhood like this, but she's a speed demon on the highway. I don't know what the top speed is, but I'm pretty sure it'll do more than 200K. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony, move, Tony. Fearless Tony. Simple as that. Oh. Now, let me show you the unbelievable part. Oops, let me turn the key back on. That is how far I went. I mean, how much fuel I've got left at 340 kilometers of driving. That's how good it is.